Let's, uh, yeah. To keep refreshing the page. Keep an eye on the chat. See if they can tell us. There We're you live. are. We are live. There's your little, there's your little man. Hey. Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. How are we all doing? Welcome. There's Jamie up in the top corner. Happy My Tuesday. My disembodied voice. Hello, Quietly Wrong. Hello, Tap Giles. Hello, Dice Man. Dice Man. Dice Man, 1989. Um, I hope you're well today. Med Centre, hello. Jamie, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. I've got my good. water. I've had a snack. I've also got my this. water. Yeah, you got your water. Good man, good yeah. man. Hi, try me do. Um, yes, stay hydrated is important. Uh, we hope Very you're important. all staying safe and well. At yes. Home. That is um, even importanter, I think. That's a lot more importanter. It's the importantest thing right now. Than our snacks it is. Um, we love you lots. Today, Jamie, the man yeah. up in the right corner there. That's me. Is going to be answering some more how do I questions that we gathered up on the old social media. Um, based using the same templates we used last time, so you've got some set uh, set things ready to show, haven't you? We've Tell got things. Um, We've got really so if you cool do things. have some more questions in the in the during the stream, let us know. Yep, yeah, just let me and know. We'll and uh, yeah. answer them. All right, Jamie. Let's what are let's we start with, with some things. Shall we start with a thing? I'm going to teach yes. a thing. And the first thing is cool explosions. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. It sounds brilliant already. Now, I've written down here that there are four key elements to a cool explosion. The four first key one, elements to a good explosion. Th 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 there are. Uh, the first one is the fiery bit, which is really Fine. important. Without that the fiery is, bit, okay. it's not an explosion, let's face it. Yeah, that's the second true. part is the smoky bit, and that usually comes after the fiery bit. OK. okay. Then there's a bit of a fireworky bit. A bit of a fireworky bit, uh huh. And then we've got extra bits. And extra bits. Extra, extra bits, miscellaneous bits, bits and pieces, and bits and bolts. With those four bits, you'll have a perfect explosion. Perfect explosion every time. Make There's note, technically a fifth yeah. bit as well. Technically What's a fifth the fifth bit, bit Jamie Breeze? I will tell you once we've done this really cool explosion. Okay. So what I'm okay. going to do? I think I'm going to start with this fun, special fifth bit. Is. Oh yeah, it, it, yeah, I think everyone will know, but yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I'm going to pick the splat. I'm going to pick a splat with a very northern accent, and I'm going to put down an orange splat right here, just like that. Nice. And we're done. No, we're not. We are going to also have a timeline for this one, so we can control the animation of our explosion. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice, nice, nice. And what, what I am going to do is duplicate this splat to give it a fiery fieriness to it. Is that a word it is now? Fieriness. And I, a fieriness. Yes. And I'm going to choose inside sphere and I'm going to reduce the spread a bit, a bit like that so we can have it all clumped together. And what else should we do? A bit of impasto. Can't go wrong. Bit of ruffle. A bit pointless but we'll keep it anyway. I'm going to have some glow to it as well, so we can get a really nice colour on this. Nice, nice. Then we're going to get some keyframes down. Who doesn't love a good keyframe? Maybe frame? we love, love a good keyframe. Yeah, so true. And we're going to start off with our default keyframe over here, and we're going to end up with this keyframe, which is going to change the look of this painting entirely. We're going to make it go, like, massive. Uh -huh. and animate a little bit, which reminds me actually what another thing I'm going to do is another. add a bit of a wavy, wavy effect on it so that when we play it, it sort of moves around a little bit like that. Oh, nice, nice, yep, yeah, nice. Always important. Showcasing. And we're going to use um, L1X to change the blend so that we get a gradual rise between the first and second keyframe. And on this one, I'm just going to... Increase the spread just a little bit. I'm just going to have a mess around. Going to add some looseness. What else can we do? We can add more copies as well. I'm going to add some more copies to start with in the default bit. Mm. And I can see if I just, if I just play that right now, it's just going to gradually get bigger. That's a bit slow actually. So and I'm just bigger. going to change and bigger. That's a perfectly crumulant Great word. Great word. Yes, <laughs> I understood that reference. Um, what I might do actually is 
um, ease out so that we get like a really quick start to the increase of the area of the fiery bit. Yeah. Bit like this. And then it slows down gradually. What else do we okay. need? I think we need some rotational um, duplicates. And I'm going to select all directions. Now, now we're now we're really working with fire. Look at that. It, it looks yes. like fire already. It's just a fireball, just waiting to happen. It's the fiery bit. That's the fiery bit. That is. Yeah. Now another thing I really want to do. Now, now I always save this to last because you, uh, it's um, a bit more difficult to gauge exactly what you want to do with it. But it's the um, the opacity, the transparency of this particular bit of painting. So what? we're going to start off with it being completely invisible, and then we're okay. going to make it go directly to like 100. It's going to be completely there and visible. Okay. So I'm going to put another keyframe there, just like that, and I'm going to do a little blend. And I'm going to have it gradually ease back into its default um, opacity. So what I'm just going to do, go into the painting, uh, find the opacity, set it to 100%, come back out, and then drag it back to zero. So that's going to be the default bit. So when I reset okay. the timeline, we can see it's invisible. But when we play it, whoa. Uh, there it is. It's a bit small, actually. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Nice. But I'm going to get rid of preview invisibility so I can I'm see what I'm doing. I'm saying my nice now, everyone. What's that, sorry? Everyone's nice. like calling me out of saying nice. It's a nice but, word. I mean, nice is a nice word. Nice. It's, nice. it's nice to it's say nice. nice. Okay, cool. I'm seeing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know? Oh, hello, Danny. We've got Danny. Danny. Hey, Danny. Danny What's up, Danny? Mm. I'm going to have a bit more spread. I think. Uh, Shamba okay. says, I didn't realise you don't have to set opacity to zero on the bookends. Yeah. Um, there you go. I'm happy that I've taught something today. I'm just buzzing with delight. Right, let's see how that goes. I'm going to make that a bit quicker too. That, that's a bit of a uh, boring uh, explosion. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not much oomph. The, the, there isn't much oomph to it. No, it's a bit quicker. A bit more oomph, bit more oomph to that. Yeah. Now, we, we've got the fiery bit down. Part two. Do you remember the part two? It was fire. It, then it was the. Oh no! Oh no! It eluded oh, you, no. isn't it? What smoky was, bit. The, smoky bit. Smoky bit. The smoky bit. It's the second Wait, most that, important bit. Dice man remembers. He knew. I, yeah. I'm happy. This isn't like a, a real thing. I mean, if you like Google, what are the four key elements to a cool explosion? Oh, no documentation no, whatsoever. Yeah. It's not an academic thing. Yeah. I've just made it up because. Uh, Ravis yes. has given me different uh, uh, cinnamon. Cin cin can't say the word. Uh, synonyms for nice. That that that's uh, um, that's good. Yeah, it's of, delightful. Um, I nearly right? said nice. Delightful. Yeah, it's delightful. <laughs> you know, says my catchphrases are nice and squee. Oh, squee! Right. That that is a good catchphrase. I like it. Right, so the smoky bit. Smoky bit. What I might do, actually, you could just um, copy the fiery bit. Oh, of course. Get rid of the animation on the fiery bit. Although, do we need to do that? Actually, no, we don't need to do that for the opacity because it will stay the same kind of. Be just a bit more of a trail afterwards. And I will get rid of the animation on this one. Mm. Although, do I need to do that? I, I could just make this bigger and have a bit less um, opacity at its peak, because that is zero opacity. That is 100%. So if I just change that to something like 35, that, that that's a good number. And I get rid of glow. You could say that is a fine and dandy number. Fine and dandy? <laughs> nice. Oh, no! we've got to eat. <laughs> I just fall into this trap of niceness. Yeah, you it's do. just so It's just difficult, man. It's... There we go, it gets a bit cloudy-ish. Mm. Cool. So I'm going to move that back here, just make it a little bit bigger. 
Let's see what that does. <laughs> it's barely recognizable, which is... <laughs> <laughs> it might be something to do with the way that I've animated it, but we will see. I know what I'll do. I'll extend that a little bit. What will you do? I will increase the opacity just to get a bit more cloudiness to it. Cloudiness to the smokiness. Mm -hmm. Because step two only has to it has to uh, emphasize step one. It does. Really. It's it's like yeah. yeah, it's like the supporting actor of step one. Mm. Cool, there's a bit more smokiness to that. Now, I would argue, <laughs> the fireball turned into a furball, it absolutely did. Oh, it's a bit more furry than I was anticipating. The cutest explosion ever. Oh. Oh, look at that, though. It's still cool, though, even if I Very say that cool. it is. Now, uh, the next bit, the fireworky bit. Now, what I like the to do with this... The fireworky bit, yes. The fireworky bit, it's crucial, Tom. It's absolutely crucial to <laughs> the explosioniness. Of an explosion, explosion I find. Yeah. Now, what you're gonna do? Well, what I do, um, I find is uh, exciting to do. I'm trying not to say it, that nice you're word. You oh, could say um, a swell. Swell. It's the swell thing to do. Now, now here's a swell thing that you can do. I, <laughs> I choose, I choose hexagon because I like hexagons. But what I'm gonna do is also. Um, just turn off invisibility just so I can see the middle of this explosion. And we've got rule flex on. And what I'm going to do is just make it go up like that, kind of like off center a bit and then up as well. Mm. Maybe a little bit further up. Cheating. Right. So it's like spitting out something. Mm. SKN3 asks where is the end? Where's the real end of a timeline? Like where would it, where should a keyframe go to be right at the end? Well, I don't know if you would because you only you always have your own end of the timeline. Yeah, I suppose I don't know what so. the actual um, limit is though. I, I imagine it yeah. doesn't have a limit. Oh, absolutely. You could keep pulling this on forever. But what yeah. I could do is um, just for the sake of uh, looking at the animation, just to uh, loop this um, timeline. Mm. Uh, then I'm going to put a bit of glow on here. And then a really cool thing that I like to do, uh, if you go into the physical properties of the painting and then add gravity without actually making it physical, it just sort of droops. Like gravity uh, acts uh, yeah. on it like that. Yeah. And it acts on every um, positional duplicate, well, every rotational duplicate in this case. It looks a bit lava-y, doesn't it? lava to it. Yeah, it does actually, yeah. yeah now, is, it, oh, is that a step? I don't think that's a step. What's that? A step? The lavariness. Lavariness. I, th I think that can come into the fireworkiness. Yeah. I I'll make an edit there. It's the fireworkiness <laughs> slash lavariness. Lavariness section. Uh, yes. And then I'm going to change the playback speed and put pulse on, so we can see that there's like a like it like it shoots out of the explosion. But we're not going to make it loop either. We're just going to have it happen yeah. once. Ah, uh, look at that beam. So it goes boop, like that. Now we can just mess around. <laughs> I, I will keep loop on just to have a look. To keep um, it yeah, satisfying. So you, yeah. you've got a lovely animation playing. Isn't it? Which it's, is another synonym. <laughs> lovely. It's a Apparently lovely one word. Apparently one of the synonyms for nice is okay. I don't think that has I the same... I disagree. It doesn't yeah. have the I niceness of nice to it. No, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, it's a strange one. Unless you say something right, like, so, oh, that's really okay. That's no, really, even, really even then, okay. No, even, even then, then, it's still underhanded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Joe Cobred, uh, why don't you guys work on a full project on the stream? I think we'd want to. I think we'd probably want to... I think we'd hit using these time streams from home to be a bit more... Uh, do all sorts of different things. But in the past, we've worked on a few uh, projects over consecutive streams. Um, so hopefully we will do that again. Um, SKN3, um, he says it always confuses me because a keyframe at the end of the time, uh, timeline always looks like it's out of edge of the timeline, and that's right. Um, I don't know if this is actually a thing. Um, 
but I always make sure that it goes to like the next step of the uh, timeline. So like we've got like the first sort of four bars here, and then I put it at the start of the fifth one, and then I drag the timeline sort of back over. And I'm not sure if that makes a difference like between that and having it at the end of the fourth bar rather than the start of the fifth bar, but it's just a thing that that sort of puts my mind at ease when I'm doing keyframes and stuff like that. And yes, it does look like an orange spider. I am <laughs> <laughs> a fiery orange spider. But now, because I'm aware of the time, I'm going to do some extra bits. Now the extra bits are just other things that you can add to it to make it a cool explosion. Mm. Um, what I like to do is add a camera shaker, which is a gadget which shakes the camera. It, it's pretty much in the title of the logic. Yeah, does what honest. it says on the tin. does, isn't it? Now, if we just play that, but there's a tiny little bit of shake there, but I'm going to change the speed to something like 50, strength 40, maybe not that much speed. That's a bit better. A bit more strength. We can also add um, a bit of grid and effect to it. So when an explosion goes off, there's usually like a like a flash of light. Yeah. That happens right at the start. So what we can do is just make it really small like this, and maybe change the brightness up. We'll see what that looks like. What I should do is pull this back a little bit. And uh, you know, you're going to add some controller vibration to Use the rumbler. That is a very good idea. Um, I would definitely recommend that. That is a, it's a very swell addition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, trying my hardest, Tom. It's, it's so very, easy uh, to reduce myself to copacetic. nice. Copacetic. 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 I like yeah. it. Uh, Falcorich, are you actually Mr. Casey Jones? Well, or is, is Mr. Casey Jones actually us? That is a very good point. Yeah. I've been drinking an awful lot of uh, YSB <laughs> yeah. soda lately. Yeah, I keep getting it sent to me for some reason. Yeah, it's, it, it just comes in the post now. Yeah, I don't see it drops off either. <laughs> <laughs> We're all a bit of Mr. Casey Jones. That is so true. true. Well, I've added that a little tiny bit a of very uh, well mannered explosion there. Well, a <laughs> well mannered. It's quite a yeah. controlled, <laughs> yet strategically yeah. placed explosion. Yeah. The the best kind of explosion, if you ask me. It is. And I'm gonna uh, because Enoch Group said so. I'm going to put a little rumbler in. You won't experience this the same way that I do right now. No, but, but as long as you can. As long as I can. It doesn't really yeah. matter. I'm going, to, I'm going to be honest, that felt good. Um, yeah, good. Nice. There it is. What else? Another thing you could do... Admirable. Admirable. Another yeah, good a one. nice one, isn't it? Yeah. I like that one. Admirable. Yeah. Oh, fine and dandy is my favourite. Fine and dandy. That's a fine and dandy explosion. It's not something you would actually say about an explosion. You would say... Get in the house immediately, there's an explosion. Yeah, yeah. Please, not copacetic. Please leave. Please leave. Please leave immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Now I should probably move on to something else, but I will mention that yeah. the fifth bit, that the, <laughs> the fifth key element to a cool explosion is not looking at it, because cool guys right. don't look at oh, explosions. Oh yeah, nice, of course. Boom. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's pretend cool I didn't say that. Yeah. And yeah, nice. that's well, a coolish explosion. Oh my god, right, I'm very aware of me saying it now. Uh, nice. Oh, uh, as Sean mentions, yeah, it's sound. It's a silent explosion. It's a silent explosion, but only yeah. because if <laughs> if I had five more minutes, there would be. <laughs> ah, it, yeah. Yes, it's yeah. so controlled that I controlled the volume. We've got <laughs> <laughs> we've got uh, we've got topics to cover. We've got topics to cover. I guess the, the question wasn't how to make like uh, loud explosions. It was how to make good explosions. A cool one, and I think the coolest cool. kind of explosion that was is a very cool explosion. If, if it lacks volume, it's very cool to me. <laughs> right, I'm going to move on now right, to yeah. another thing, which I, which was kind of asked. Um, flying puppets, I think, was right. what someone asked, but I, I've sort of adapted it 
And I've got a little character here that I'm gonna I'm gonna show off. He doesn't quite fly, my pigeon. I call him business pigeon for obvious reasons. Yeah, um it's very businessy. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that now. We don't need the explosion. It would frighten off the pigeons. The pigeon. Alright, where's he at? Oh no. I oh no. Pow I haven't powered him on. Oh my goodness. How rude. I know, I, I feel so bad. What does he sell? Well, is it, are all of your templates today unpowered off so you can't see them? Yes. So, well, yeah. well, most of them. You'll see some very stuff in the background smooth. that I haven't powered off yet. <laughs> that is very pleasant. Thank you. <laughs> pleasant. <laughs> that, oh, yeah. Know, his idle animations are so good. I, I tried my best. I really yeah, did. That's so kind good. of. Yeah, I, I thought, what, what would I do if I was a pigeon? Of course, I would peck at the ground randomly. Does he work in the stork market? I don't know whether to... Reddish boat. Reddish boat. <laughs> Come Reddish on, boat. man. Come on. Right. So what are we doing with him? Making him fly? Yeah, I'm going to show off his little um, mechanic if, if he's not too busy pecking. Um, just walk around a little bit. Now what he can do, he can jump. He can double <laughs> jump. But he can also glide. Ah. I'm just going to show that off now. So that's when you... You double jump and then you hold the X button in, the cross button in. Right. He will do a bit of a glide unless you let it go. Okay. Cool. So how does that happen? I will show you. Um, there are some awful puns happening. Yeah, I, I've got chat yeah. open and I, I can He's like every now and then I can I can yeah. feel the hint of a pun and I, yeah. I'm like He's I don't want to be drawn into it. This pecking order. Pecking order. Don't tweet yeah. that one. He's don't tweet it. Money in a sweet little nest egg. Oh, no. Man. I feel like moving on to a different part of the stream. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Um, yeah, scrap this bit. Scrap this bit. Far too many puns. Too silly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Go on. Um, right. Now, the gliding mechanic on this bird works using the puppet interface, which is incredibly useful. Um, what you can do. Sorry, is you can uh, detect like different functions of the puppet, like if it jumps or double jumps. Now, uh, this puppet can double jump. I've set right. it to a one meter jump height with a 0.5 meter double jump height, and when it does, it tracks um, when you click double jump, but also while you're still holding jump, and then right. that activates this microchip, which does all of uh, that business, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it from scratch using uh, a default puppet. Actually, I might keep him there, but I will power him off again, and I'll probably forget about that and wonder where he is. Because you just don't care. Just don't care. Just don't care for him, don't care for him at all. So, I'm going to pop down a blank puppet. Then we're going to go straight into his logic. Their logic, rather. Um, Right, the first thing I'm going to do is give him a double jump. I'll just check that out straight away just to see if that's okay. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Now the key to making the character glide is yeah. to uh, gradually... Sorry, you have to um, stop their vertical movement instantly, change their gravity to zero instantly, and then gradually bring it back in. So I'll, I'll show you what I did with uh, this puppet first. Um, in the animations, in this, um, sorry, in this microchip, I use a timeline, and that just uses a keyframe. That is um, zero percent gravity, and then it brings it all the way back to its default. Right. So I'm just going to kind of copy that on here. And how long did I use on this one? Okay, I'll just drag that back. And put a keyframe here. And another keyframe over here. You get a keyframe. You get a keyframe. Yeah, everyone gets a keyframe. You get and a keyframe. <laughs> and it's important to kind of like ease it in gradually to uh, its default gravity. And then I'm going to change that to zero. 
So if I just uh, play this timeline, you can see that it changes from 0% uh, gravity, and then it like gradually rises. I don't know if you can see that, maybe if I do that again. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oops. Yeah. And we're going to yeah, activate that. Yeah. I'm going to keep this in another microchip. Good to keep it at least slightly organised, I find. I think so. Yeah, Just a little I bit, not so. too much organisation. You don't want to know I what everything so. is. No, come on now, or too much organisation. That's that's oh, silly. It really is. That's silly. Absurd. Right, and we're triggering this uh, timeline when the puppet has done a double jump, which is. Let me find it. There it is. Um, I think I'm going to need a keyframe there. Yes, uh, sorry, I'm going to need an AND gate with this one. Mm. Because it's not just when you've double jumped, because if you did that, then as soon as you double jumped, whether or not you kept holding, kept holding the, uh, holding, 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 the X button. <laughs> yes, uh, it, do, it wouldn't matter if you kept on holding the X button, it would just do it anyway after a double jump. So I'm going to pop that in there, and I'm going to take the X button cross button out of there. Do you say X or cross? I used to say cross a lot. Cross. As a kid. Cross. cross. I, I think the I think it's officially cross. I think I remember the It's officially cross. Did. I think well, PlayStation Counts did a, a tweet or a tweet thing once where they said it was cross but the X button. Man. Yeah, well there we go. Don't start yeah. that war again. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be yeah, people are just telling me how wrong, how wrong I am. It is, a cross. it is, yeah. It, is, it absolutely is. is. Right, and then I'm going to have um, a check to make sure it's that X is um, cross, is not being held. So, yeah, I can't do that. Um, and that is going to look like this. So if cross isn't being held, now, now, I don't know if this is just me, just for peace of mind's sake, but I like to have uh, this like repeatedly sort of checking with the yeah. not gate that's tied to itself, which basically just pulses something 15 times per second. Yeah, everyone was, uh, everyone was worried about your not gate. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine. Oh, yeah, it's serious business. And then the output <laughs> of that into uh, the reset of this counter. So this counter is just going to tell this timeline to be on. And if yeah. we're not holding X, then it's going to go. Nope, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to have uh, weird gravity, or you're not going to flap your arms, or something like that. Oh no, Hemlock! I check out when we started talking logic. I apologise. I feel like it's crucial. We have got, some other, we have got some other topics. We've got some music stuff coming up. So, oh, if if you can, yeah, if you can, um, just keep going. Hold out. Hold out. Yeah, you you can do it. I believe in you. Uh, right. What was I doing? Um, yep. Yeah. That is double jump band being held. Eight hour stream. What do you say, Tom? Yeah, let's go for it, man. Let's do it's it. About, it's about midnight. Here and now. Here and now. Here and now, I'm calling it. Yes. Um, right. Let me check if I've done anything wrong there. Probably. Oh, yeah. Also, um, we need to stop this when the character touches the ground again because otherwise it just wouldn't make sense. Just wouldn't make any sense. So you just use landing impact, and I'm going to pop that into the reset. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yep. But also another thing I mentioned earlier is that you need to stop the vertical movement of the puppet because otherwise he might just fly away. He would just go. Whoosh. Which we don't want. We we absolutely don't want that, Tom. So priority. It's to... a priority. Yeah, we we need to keep him on this. Uh, cuboid of sorts. So I'm going to put down a signal manipulator with a pulse so it only sends one frame of uh, a signal. I'm going to go to an advanced mover. Now, this is really cool. You can uh, stop something. You, you don't even have to move things with the advanced mover. It's really cool. I'm going to put 100% movement strength. Um, I'm going to take a look at the coordinates of the puppet. And we don't want to damp their X movement because then that would stop them 
moving left and right, and that would be a bit weird. Yes. Um, we're going to do the same with the Z, because we don't want to stop them moving forward and backward, but we do want to stop their Y movement, so I'm going to put that up to 100%. And that's going to go in here. I'm doing an awful lot of logic without actually checking it out, and this is going to be... I imagine this is going to be a lot of uh, troubleshooting, but let's just, see, uh, let's just see what happens. And yeah, Right, so we do a jump, and a double jump, oh, and they're floating, look at that. Look at that. Nice. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. But there's one thing there that I really didn't like. When you do it for the first time, it kind of does like a weird kind of... Whoop, like, sort of like a glitchy uh, animation there. Yeah. And what I would... What I think I will do is put a huge knot gate on here. A huge one. A huge... Look at the size of that knot gate. Oh, absolute, my goodness. Absolute unit. Um, gonna take the output. So basically, that that's going to be part because nothing goes into that, and as long as I play it, there's going to be an output on that yeah. timeline. So I'm gonna take the output of that, and I'm going to plug it into. Let me check the procedural animation, uh, procedural walk, and the procedural animation um, functions. I'm gonna see if that does anything. Oh no! Yeah. He stopped moving entirely. Oh no! I know why. I need another not get. It. I could have put a switch there actually, but for the sake of saving yeah. time. So this is now a not not, which is a is I suppose an is gate. Yeah. A not not. Now there's less glitchiness to it. Now we could improve this by making him. Yeah, absolutely. Tap Charles. We we could use a keyframe in that case. You could uh, keyframe the. That that'd be so much easier. Why didn't I think of that? Thanks, Tap Charles. Dorian asks, is a not not gate an is gate? Yep, that's exactly what I said. I agree. <laughs> that should be. Can we get a patch, oh, right, a new yeah, patch I for an is gate? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let me message uh, people. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to keyframe them off. Hopefully that should work. Yeah, that's a bit less glitchy. I like it. Uh, how are we doing for time? Oh, Good, you got half now. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. You're now, fine. Uh, for the sake of it looks brilliant. Not really, but I'm going to roll with it. It's going to look good. Uh, I'm going to make him flap his arms, just to give just to give that essence of glidiness. Another word for yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, nice. Now, uh, once again, I'm going glidiness. to use glidiness. I'm going to use a not get um, plugged into itself, and I'm going to use a selector because selectors choose one um, one behavior at a time or one input at a time, and I'm just going to uh, put two keyframes down. This is just going to look absurd because I'm doing it so quickly, but I'm going to go in. It'll be good, it'll be fine. I'm going to have one like this. You know what, I think I, I could just do that and then maybe have a bit of uh, slow power up, slow power down. And plug that into there. So what that's going to do is that that's going to uh, give 15 pulses per second into the move to next output. So it's going to change between A and B, A, B, A, B, and then it's going to uh, power on the keyframe only when it's B. So it's going right. to, um, well, let's play it and then see if it works. Uh, now, <laughs> his uh, arms are slightly this. moving. Hey. It's slightly doing it, but I feel like there's some yeah. interference of um, other... Uh, Shamba asks, is there a reason to not just use the output from the not gate into a single keyframe instead of a selector? Um, you could do that, actually, yeah. Because yeah. originally I was going to use two keyframes, but then I just thought I would use a selector, but you can absolutely... Yeah, I think hmm. that's one of those things, like, everyone has their own... Way that, that, that's a good thing, it. actually. Um, I think... Hang on, let me think. This would give uh, 15. That changes that 15 times, so that means half of that time it's going to. Right, that would give a really, really quick animation, I think. I think that would be a quicker flapping animation. Yeah. Um, let me check. Sticking in a timeline. That, yeah, that is probably so much easier. I, I, I could actually do that. Um, 
Let's see why this isn't actually Jamie working. Jamie Skinny Chad says, Jamie is very good at explaining what he's doing while he's doing it. There's a talent that is hard to come by. <laughs> Greatly appreciate it. As long as one Agreed, person thinks that, I am, I, no, I'm absolutely... You are excellent, sir. Excellent. I have it. Yeah, that that is another good idea, actually, Tub Giles. If you had, um, if you just have a, a timeline, like like I'm just going like completely logic based on here. But if you use a timeline like like this that just loops on the timeline, you you could just eradicate all use of uh, keyframes or anything like. Well, you could still use a keyframe. But yeah, uh, let's have a look in trip animation. It might be in here. Get rid of that. Just for... It could be to do with that actually. If I get rid of the um hmm. I might need to turn off this uh microchip. While this is being played, hello, Don Lee Games. You are just tuning in. Jamie is, uh, we've gathered up some how do I questions. Jamie's answering them with how do I answers. Yes. And right now we are asking, answering the question how do I make a f character? And I'm currently wondering about that myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, let's just check that. And I'm definitely missing something here. I think there's like um, there's an animation that's been played. I feel like it might be the jump animation. You can see that the the arms slightly moving. Yeah. While he does it, but I feel like it's conflicted with possibly. See, this is the importance of test mode. Let's have a look. See if that's what's happening. Uh, I think I uh, moved the mic away from my head a little bit, so I'm so sorry if I was really quiet. Oh no. We've got one of those that's bendy mics. Oh, bendy mics. Bendy mics. I've got a it's stuck to the TV mic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't get much you mileage out of that. I cannot leave. Right. I've resorted to it again. I'm, I'm using a not get. Yeah, this is your way. This is your version. Yeah, yeah I don't know why why I do it this way. It, it just it's just one of those quirks, maybe or something, that I'm going to disable the jump animations while that's playing, and hopefully, we've got a flap. <laughs> Although that looks really sinister, but I'm oh happy my with look. it. It's like if a that human mouth. At, if that was coming yeah. at you. You would you'd die. like it, wouldn't you? You, 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 you yeah. You'd be like, nope. <laughs> nope, not doing that. Nope, nope, um, nope, nope, nope. Now, we could... Let me think. If we go into this keyframe, we could probably um, animate his legs to look less, uh, less like he's just completely... Um, Somewhere else. In yeah. Some sort of... Doing some kind of weird... Now, this is what I've done for... Uh, the the pigeon puppet it kind of like that should be out a bit more like that I think <laughs> yeah if you're just tuning in now <laughs> yeah I am this is dreams this is dreams keyframing a puppet's leg oh sorry Dorian yeah hopefully you can turn it down now there we go that is really really Look basic <laughs> <laughs> and he's trying his best to glide and flap his but way to victory. That is how you make a character fly. That is really basic, and I spent a lot more time trying to get the kinks out of the uh, the pigeon puppet. As you can see, if I just bring him back... It works. It works. It, it, it works on a technical level, and in yeah. that alone it's the a success. The character is no longer stood. It is flying. <laughs> it, it is absolutely so I would, flying. I would rate that... Rate that. Commendable. You're, you're... Yes. Which is another word for nice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. You can Ma tell I Ma put Ma a lot more. I swear I'm off the drugs. I told you I saw, I saw a blue man fly. <laughs> <laughs> Only in dreams, man. Only in dreams. 
Yeah. I suppose if you want to make the animation more convincing, you can add sound. Uh, for instance, on the pigeon that I made. Yeah. These these sentences that you say when you're relating to dreams, like oh mate, some on this of the pigeon things that I made. In our past. Yeah. And and he ma some he makes a flex. Yeah. Um. Uh, a uh, where are we at? Uh, S O O one R. So if you wanted them to fly indefinitely, you just wouldn't have the automatic power down. Yeah, um, yeah, that would be an infinite glide, I think. A bit different to flying, but I think I'm going to put a bit more effort into looking into uh, how to make a, a puppet look like it's actually flying, like a superhero kind of fly. And yeah. maybe <laughs> on, a, on, a, on another stream we can... Uh... <laughs> flap Giles. That's, <laughs> that a really... what, I, yeah, that's what I just giggled giles. at. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know if that would be uh, offensive, though. Like, Flap Giles. It's... Flap Giles. If Tap Giles is okay with it, he said, I think ha, so, ha, he ha. just laughed. Yeah, Tappy G is fine. Tappy G is fine. Flappy, <laughs> Flappy G. Flappy G. Flappy G. Flappy G. My goodness. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. So that's how. Yeah. Maybe Flappy G. Yeah. Flappy, <laughs> Flappy G. Flappy G. My goodness. G. Flappy G. Flappy G. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's so good. Cool. Right, we're going to pretend we didn't do that, and then yeah, we did that. That, that we happened. did that. We did that, and it was good. Yeah, and be it, and proud it of it. Look. Proud of that. Yeah. Right. The the next um, right, what's the next thing do, I want to. How uh, do I? How do I? This next how do I comes from uh, Sean Freaky, who's in the chat. I think. Ah, Shabba Gamba. Shabba Gamba. He's there, and he asked me yesterday, how do you make um, a chucking effect on the guitar? And now my mind immediately went to, what is chucking? Because. Yeah. I, I don't know the said, technical terms. No, I thought you said chugging earlier. Chugging. I've never heard of chugging, so I was like... Is that when you put put a drink on the guitar and you yeah, hold you it like it. lengthways yeah. and... Yeah. yeah. But chugging is entirely different. Um, and I've got a couple of examples, actually. Uh, I was messing around with this earlier. Mm. And... Um, sound on for this, because it's... This is a bit of a, a, a weird attempt at it, but basically you can get a lot of mileage out of um, instruments just by changing the um, the ADSR. Um, right. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll go into uh, more depth in a bit, but I'm just going to play this for now. Now it's just a really basic um, chord progression. Yeah. But but what we've got here is a more percussive sound uh, after a couple of chords at the start. Now, <laughs> this is going to be a bit weird to uh, explain because most of the time I use... Um, that's a good point actually, Mr. Casey Jones. Mileage, not kilometrage. I should work <laughs> on my uh, metric, metric usage. Yeah, chucking. Sorry, we're not talking chugging. Yeah, sorry. Chucking, not not chucking, chucking, chuck, chuck, chucking. Which yeah, was new, new, which is new to me. I think I heard it before, and then it just sort of brought back like memories of first yeah. learning how to play it because it's it's actually a pretty basic thing. But all, all it is is uh, when you play a chord, and yeah. then um, you uh, put your hand sort of like over the strings, but you don't play any, you don't fret any of the notes. You you play yeah. like dead notes. The so it's, it's just like a yeah, it, like it, mute, muting, isn't it? It's muting, muting almost, yeah. yeah. Like, like with the opposite hand, it would be palm muting because you're yeah. minimising the amount of vibrations coming through to the string. Yeah, I've never known as the, it's called chucking. I've, I've always just chucking, thought that was. Yeah. I, I just Dead call it notes. muting. Oh, muting, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, which would be like notified by an X on a tab or something like that. Anyway, yeah. we're quite lucky on the steel string guitar instrument because it's already got a thing called the muffler. And mm. it's just an effect field which changes the ADSR. Cross. What's that? Cross. Uh, no, Sorry, uh, cross, okay. cross. Yeah. I think cross. Um, ch chugging I'd describe as like, you know, when you. Like, I would say that's like when you go. Yeah, that, that's more chugging metal, is more isn't of it? a noise, isn't it? It's more of a yeah. noise. That, it's, more of a, it's more of an idea than it is a practice. Yeah, it, it's more of a philosophical endeavouring in the guitar world. Yeah. Yeah, chucking is more like percussive. It's like getting like a like an actual, yeah. and chucking is just like a rhythmic thing. I would say. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, with with the muffler, I'm just going to um, 
Oh, sorry, I've already got them up and right. Right, I've already kind of changed the ADSR in here so that we get like a kind of a pluck sound and then it stays as long as I'm holding the button. Mm. So there's like an immediate release. So whenever you play notes, it just... it would play it normally. But if you play it over um, the muffler, um, that's there by default, it doesn't matter how long that you hold the note, it sort of mutes it, kind of, right. a little bit straight away. And now... I usually uh, use the piano roll to put the chords in. Now these are just, um, oh, okay. I guess, what's this, a G5 chord, I think, a power chord on the guitar. Oh. And, um, it's a classic. A classic, absolute classic. It's, in, <laughs> classic it's a mini chord. song, a classic chord. <laughs> and what you, what you can do, I'm not sure if many people know how to do this, but you, you can pick up the notes that you've already uh, placed down on on the performance mode. And you can put them in other sections or other positions on the performance area. So if there's an effect that you really like, you can go, oh, well, I just want that particular note to go over here. And then when you play it, it's a bit like... No! I I did not know that! <laughs> you didn't know that? Well, there, there you go. That's no! How, there's another thing you can do. Oh! Yeah, and... Um, what every I've done day is, is I, a school day. Every day is a school day. And what I've done is I, I've specifically chosen the uh, notes that I want to sound a bit more percussive and I've dragged them over to the muffler. Now this is just one example. Um, I have a better example here, um, which actually goes through like a sort of progression of how I get a guitar sound to sound more like a guitar that isn't just immediately recorded into Dreams. Yeah, yeah and Tab Giles has a tutorial on this, so definitely check that out um, after yeah. the stream, after the stream. Keep with us for now. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to play this and this is, yeah exactly and this is just um, at the very basic level some kind of chord progression mm. yeah, it's um, a chord progression that's, that's, it, it's a, it, it's all you need so I'm just going to play that with a bit of um, percussion just to keep the rhythm now it's got, it's got no soul to it it just doesn't really have any kind of, like it's just notes some more it notes, just, it, then some more it simply, notes. Yeah, it simply is. It just exists. It, it's yeah. there's no finesse to it. But what I do here, just adding a few more notes, just to get it a bit more. Like right here, you can see at the start, um, I've changed the position of the notes, how they start. Yeah. So like when you play the guitar, obviously you you like you can do like you strum it like up upstroke and downstroke. Yeah, and like obviously you're not going to play every note at the same time unless you're like insanely fast. But the subtlety of just like like immediately there, we're getting like the notes played in succession really quickly. But it changes how yeah. it sounds, that like the texture, the dynamics of the sound immediately. So I'm just going to play this one. Yeah, and I haven't changed the ADSR of this yet. But for the next one, I've done something a bit cheeky, Tom. I've done something really cheeky. Jamie! I apologise in advance. Now, this wasn't here before, was it? Ghost Notes. Now, Ghost Notes are in an actual different instrument, and I've just stolen that from somewhere else. <gasps> Let me... That it's in is muted... cheeky. It is cheeky, isn't it, right? In muted funk guitar, you've got Ghost Notes. Just random... Mm. Which is basically oh. chucking. It's just like muting the notes so that oh. you get a percussive sound instead of an actual sort of tonal sound. Yeah. So what I do is uh, copy the ghost notes in here and I, I just put it down there, just out the way. And like I did yeah. before, I, I moved the notes that I wanted to sound like a chuck kind of effect, like a more percussive sound, and I put them in the ghost note section. So I'm going to play that version now, uh, which is this one. So you can hear there's the ghost notes. But there's still a bit of release on the guitar that I don't quite like. Again, I haven't missed... Right, yeah. I haven't, I haven't, not that you're a perfectionist uh, or anything. Absolutely not. I, I would never claim that, Tom. Um, yeah. <laughs> but the ADSR definitely helps in this case, because if we played this version instead, which has a bit of... Um, like, the attack is immediate, the decay goes down a little bit. So there's like... When the note is played, it immediately 
sort of lowers the volume of the sound that's played. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a just a tiny cutoff as well, so that the note isn't ringing out like that. Like if I play that, that note's just playing forever as far ring. as I'm aware. Yeah. But if yeah. I play that. Yeah. That it stops gonna... like immediately after it's been played. Yeah. So when I play this, it's going to sound a bit more realistic or more guitar-like. Of course. And you can do the same yeah, kind of thing with good. other instruments. You can like, like the drum kit, for instance. I've done it a little bit here. Um, I'll just play this. Yeah. I'm not sure who said this, but it's um, music is just just as much about the notes that you're not playing. And ah. in this case, um, that's exactly what you're doing. That's yeah. I mean, it would like would it be realistic to um, have like an open hi hat that plays over a closed one? So yeah. what you would do is edit the ADSR to have like a like a like a smaller release. So when you play it, you don't get that like ringing out over it. And so like if I did this, if I pulled out the release a little bit more and then played it, yeah. You can still hear the open hi hat when the closed hi hat is still like playing. So if I move yeah. that back and put them together, just a little tune that I put together in like two minutes earlier. But <laughs> <laughs> mate, there you go. That that is how you. Yeah, that that's how you. Um, I will probably release this there so like, if anyone wants to take a look at like how I've kind of spaced the notes out just to make it sound yeah. a bit more, like more realistic but it's still not entirely realistic but yeah you can absolutely uh, copy yeah, copy uh, stuff from other instruments like for instance the metal factory guitar has a really cool uh, sustain instrument it's not an effect it's its own instrument like you, you play that it sounds completely different to the to the chugging that yeah. we're talking about chugging the chugging. The chugging. The, the chugging. Chugin. Yeah, and, and you can, nice. like, if, you, like for instance, if you had a song that consisted of, like, a lot of, like, sustain guitar, but you didn't use the actual Metal Factory, you can save just a little bit of thermo just by having that one instrument instead of the two. Yeah. Or, or in, in that instrument's case, it actually has three because there's also the accent, which is just like a like a choking and an immediate stop after that. Right. But yeah, there, there are lots of ways you can make it more efficient for yourself. Amazing. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Lovely. Good work. Good now, work. We've I'm gonna, got <laughs> that. That one is um, superior. Damn, superior. That superior. is not Righteous. a good synonym for nice. Righteous. Like superior is much bigger than nice. Yeah, I'd it say. is. But that was superior. It, it superior, was superior. Uh, superior tip. Right. Thank you. I think Thank we've you. got time for one more, Jamie. <laughs> now this is interesting. Are we going to delve into the basics of exclusive gates in seven minutes? This is a challenge and a half. Is that, is that what we've got left on our sheet? We, we've got exclusive gates. I've even made exclusive gates. They've even got VIPs. Look, they've got exclusive gates. exclusive that gates. That are exclusive gates. Exclusive it gate. is quite Amazing. literally. On a basic, even, I would say it's quite poetic. Even. It is. Yeah. That's a very um, gracious way of setting well, up. Like if that was in a farm, you know that only the best cows only would be behind the like the exclusive ah. gate. There'd be champagne, all sorts. Anyway. Yeah, nice, nice. Let, let, let's have a quick look at exclusive gates. Now, there are plenty of really good tutorials on YouTube, and I'm going to name drop them after I've done this. Nice. But I'm going to start off with um, automatic. Like, basically, an exclusive gate, it only lets one signal through um, gates that are named the same. Named the yeah. same. I uh, just realized named how northern that sounded. Now I've named, yeah. named, named all of these. Uh, just get. Yeah. And yeah, they're all default and set to automatic. Now automatic means that when the signals are all on, like that. Yeah. Now only the first one is going to be on. Like it, the signal is going through to all three of these different gates. Without those gates, all of those actual you see, this is why I shouldn't have used gates. This is going to get very confusing very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> now, with those gates, no, the other gates, all three of those actual gates would be open if not for the three exclusive gates. Right. 
but because the exclusive gates are there and the signal is being fed through them, only one is actually being opened right now. But the cool thing is, if I get rid of, now, just a reminder, these are all in automatic mode. If I get rid of the signal from this one, oh, look at that. Another ah. one has, has opened in place. Yay. So we're only going to have one gate open at any one time. And right. as you'd expect, the middle gate will open when I get rid of um, the last signal. Or it did not. Falco, Falco it Rich did not. It's called the doors. Doors. That is a really yeah. good idea. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> it seems so obvious. It's fine. Thank you, Falco. It's on a Tuesday. It's, it's what happens. Yeah, it's what it's, happens. It just, just, just happens, man. It just happens. Now, yeah. So if I get rid of that, if, if I get rid of this signal here, it goes back to the middle signal. Now I'm going to put them all back on because that is just automatic mode. I'm going to change the gates to manual mode. Now manual mode, all that means is you have to reset those gates manually. So if there isn't a signal going to something, it will stay on until yeah. you actually click the reset button. And then, oh sorry, in my case you would have to click this reset button, but you might have like another thing, like a signal manipulator that sets a pulse or a counter or a timer or something like that. Yeah. But in my case, a reset button. Reset button. And then here we've got another one. Get rid of that. Nothing changes because it's it still requires a manual reset, which is the whole point of the manual mode. So yeah. if I reset that one, it opens the middle one. Now, yeah. similarly, Similarly, we've got, similarly, we've got the Q mode, which is basically the same as manual mode, except it cycles through all of the um, all of the gates until all of the the gates with the same name with that signal have been cycled through, and then it will go. It will just reset. Mm. Um, you also included exactly yeah. Right, so I'm just going to quickly demonstrate this one. Just put all the signals on like that. Take this one off, reset. And now if I get rid of the signal that's going to the second one and then put another signal to the first one, it's not going to do anything because we haven't cycled through all three of them yet. Right. Because the whole point of the queue system is that we go through every single one until we get to the last one. Now if I put a signal into the first one like I did there, that's not going to open up because it knows that we haven't um, been to the third gate yet. So if I put a signal back onto that one, um, sorry, if I reset that one, what have I done there? I've done something wrong, I think. <laughs> right, I'm going to put them all back on. Take the signal off of that one, reset it, it moves to the next one. Right, that's why, I'm, and then the third one, you would have to take the signal out and reset yeah. that one. And there we go. And then it would cycle through all of those um, right ones. exclusive gates that are named exactly the same. Yeah. That is the most important part of that. And I do have an example of it, which I keep peddling because I'm I'm no good. But I find this is mostly useful for yeah. like interfaces and stuff like that. Right. Now, yeah. Now let's say, for example, you um, you had a game. I know, right? It's like in dreams. If you had a game, my goodness. If you had a what, game, is world, what is the world coming to? Yeah, my goodness. If you man. did that. Now, if you had a game and you had something like a bit like a meta game, like an achievement system, and you have something like you need to get to the end of the level um, without getting hit. Yeah. And that is one condition. And you also had another one that was get to the end of the level without dying. Now it's two separate things but they could both be triggered at the same time yes of course now if you did trigger both of them at the same time without using exclusive gates you would have two um interface achievements popping up at the same time you would get like double the sound and two things you get all kinds of like collision stuff happening it'd be really weird yeah. uh, for the player the end user be a mess it would be an absolute mess but if you use exclusive gates now I've done a cycle system because they all have the same priority. That is an important uh, thing to uh, clarify actually. There is a okay. priority system. I realize it's six o'clock now, oops. 
I will, it's all good. I will, I will, no I will finish my no thought. I will finish my thought. No worries. Keep uh, it going. Priority system is good because you can set different priorities on uh, different events happening, and if yeah. something has a higher priority, then that will be triggered first. It will sort of interrupt the signal, and then that will be triggered, and then the next thing, the next lower priority number signal will then be triggered. And that's what I was going to do for this, but it would make no sense because everything would... Um, you could have them sort of activate at the same time and they would all require the same priority. So so there's no um, bias as to which um, thing is being triggered. So if yeah. I just quickly demonstrate this, because I've, I've uh, sort of... Um, I've hooked this up so that when you press the X button, the cross button, sorry, when you press cross. the cross button, cross button, I will... Uh, I will teach myself. When you press the cross button, you get an achievement. But also, if you press the circle one. Now, if I had pressed the cross and circle button at the same time, which I'm going to do now, if not for exclusive gates, they would both trigger. But I'm not pressing anything. It's queued them both up so that the second one there will it is. play yeah. after that one, which I think is a really good use of the exclusive gate. Yeah. Definitely what I would recommend. But that's just one example. Yeah. There, there are so many, like, like, if you want to make exclusive gates, if you want to make a, a farm with a, I don't know, with a VIP on, mate, lounge. Finish, finish, the, exclusive. finish the example. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I need to finish this, finish my VIP farm with plenty of exclusive gates or doors or something. But yeah, that's yeah. kind of a, <laughs> a crash course in yeah. exclusive gates. Exclusive gates in seven minutes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Sh Shambra asked the warning about using the exclusive gates and the tooltips says about thermo and stuff. Just how much does this impact thermo? What's the risk? No, I haven't used it enough to um, know what the sort of thermo risk is for it. But yeah. um, if if I bring that back, there's like a it's a two percent uh, gameplay thing for for like four exclusive gates. If I just get rid of those, I will check. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually made a difference in that case. Yeah. But if you had something like 50, I, I think it would probably be a bit more obvious. Yeah. I'm I not think certain. Like I will. I will check it out and I will get back to you. Yeah. Cool. Well done, um, Jamie. Thank you. Any other questions or? We I think good? we're good. I think we're. Uh, I think we're good. Sham says thank you. Uh, well, you're very thank welcome. you everyone. Well done. Well done, Jamie, for another. Thank you. How do I stream? Th thanks for having me. I really enjoy it. Jamie, it is your birthday tomorrow. It's very exciting. <laughs> it is my birthday. Tom, you have to Happy. tell everyone. Sorry, I have to. Uh, Happy yeah, birthday have to. for tomorrow, it's Jamie. Fine. Thank you so much. I have to. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Um, we uh, a new community jam uh, started Ooh. today. Very my favourite one. Imagine. My favourite one. I gave yeah, you an idea excited. for this one earlier, and I think I you might did, actually. You did, didn't you? You yeah. should. Uh, you should do don't, it. Don't tell anyone. Don't obviously, tell anyone. Obviously, don't enter the jam because that's obviously. against the rules. Yeah. Um, I can't do but you can at least you could make something. Um, and we shall. Uh, be back on Thursday for yes. an amazing stream of playing your amazing creations. Yeah, Tom, you've seen uh, how many that I've found for this one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's like, what? A highlights in there. Where will these amazing. come from? Uh, the Onara, uh, What's the jam theme? The theme is imaginary sports. <laughs> imaginary sports. Yeah, which is a. Uh, I am I really excited nice. to see how this one pans out. Actually. Very suitable to dreams theme. It really is, isn't very, it? Yeah. Very suitable. Very, very suitable. Uh, we shall see you all on Thursday. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Um, have a lovely evening. Jamie's going to press the go offline button any minute I'll now. Press it any minute now. So all right, you're bye, press everyone. It. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye. bye. I'm going to press the button now. Am I still I'm pressing stop broadcast?